Hello everyone. Let's continue our discussion on identifying the relationship between the resistance and and the current drain current of uh, of a transistor. So if you look into a normal uh, Ohm's law, V equal to I R. If your V and I are linearly changing, your resistance tends to be constant. But the resistance in in the MOSFET context, it's a bit different. Let's look into uh, it how it is different. And uh, before before getting into that, let's conclude what we uh, what we talked about in the last video. So if your resistance values increases, it if, if it's a very high resistance the amount of time taken for this capacitance to charge basically the amount of time taken by the current to reach from this point to this point is very huge and as a result of that the time required for this capacitance to charge will become very huge and as a result of that you will get a waveform which is even more deteriorated compared to this one so your output waveform is completely our characteristics of the resistance and the capacitance the output waveform that you see over here which in turn depends upon the amount of current that gets the, the amount of current that gets supplied to this particular capacitance within a within a finite amount of within a finite period of time so basically current is dq by dt it's the amount of charge that can be supplied to the capacitance per unit time and the uh, and the time required the more the time required for the capacitance to uh, for, for the current to reach the capacitance more more the amount of time will be required for this capacitance to get charged and the waveform will get deteriorated and all this depends on two values one is the resistance and another is the capacitance but right now we are interested on the in the resistance values of of this particular circuit so that's how current is important so uh, and in the in on the second hand if you see if we apply this particular waveform at the input of the cmos inverter this is what you get at the output of the waveform inverter and just now we realize that the output waveform is a function of the resistance okay and the propagation delay the propagation delay is like uh, it's the delay difference between the 50 percent of the input waveform to the 50 percent of the output waveform okay so that is basically called as the propagation delay and and the output waveform is a function of the resistance the higher the resistance the 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 the, the worse the output waveform and your delay and the and the propagation delay increases so in a nutshell what we are trying to say is the propagation delay which is present over here that's a function of your resistance okay so now propagation delay is a function of the resistance now the next job is to identify what is it in the resistance that is so dependent on the drain current how does the resistance varies and then finally connected to the uh, the variations that we talked about in the in the initial videos okay so let's look into the resistance of an inverter cell it's basically the resistance of a mosfet in of a mosfet transistor inside an inverter cell that's what we are going to look so for example let's take the same circuitry we have the pmos and mos and the cmos inverter and this is the current equation this is the current id the current that flows from your from your uh, supply voltage onto the onto the capacitor so this is your current id and the output waveform is 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 a function of your resistance output waveform shape is a function of your resistance and and basically the drain current also is dependent on this particular resistance okay so moving ahead if you see in a in a normal uh, uh, ohms law characteristics you will find the resistance is a resistance is pretty linear if you plot v on one axis uh, if you plot the voltage on y axis and uh, current on the x uh, sorry if you plot current on the x axis and voltage on the y axis your resistance pretty much remains constant but in this case if you if you plot the drain current on the y axis and voltage on the x axis in in a in a normal case the 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 waveform would have been some, something like this it would have been a straight line but in case of a mosfet invert in case of a transistor the waveform looks something like this so the current increases with the uh, with the drain voltage but at some point of time it gets saturated okay and 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 if you if you try to calculate the resistance from this particular waveform basically the resistance which is v by i the the, the voltage divided by current at some at different points you'll find different resistance so uh, if you if you look into this particular formula r equal to v by i the basic ohms law and try to obtain the resistance value from this section at this point you will find a resistance which is corresponding to this current and this voltage at this point you will find a resistance which is corresponding to this current and this voltage so there are different values of resistance uh, uh, across across whenever a uh, mosfet switches basically whenever a transistor switches from 0 to 1 and then when it completely switches to 1 
the current remains constant but during this particular transition phase you have different resistances values which are present and and this different and and, and to obtain a resistance value you have to integrate the resistance you have to integrate the current waveform between r1 to r2 and and all those things you need to do but we won't get into the the math behind it it's basically we are trying to say the resistance values is different at different ids so if you have the drain current at this point of time the resistance is dependent uh, on this drain current and the voltage at this point at this point resistance is called r2 and it's basically the current at this point divided by voltage at this point oh, sorry the other way around it's basically voltage at this point divided by current at this point and the current and the current variation is not linear with voltage it's a non-linear non-linear variation and as a result of that the resistance is also non-linear okay so r is not constant but varies with drain current id and now if you if you try to connect everything basically let's try to connect things that we have learned till now so your propagation delay it's a function of resistance as we just saw your your resistance is a function of your drain current as we also that that also what we just saw basically the the current and the voltage characteristics and your and and the and the drain current is again a function of your oxide thickness w and l that also we have just seen in the in the equation that we started when we start when, when we begin when we begin this lecture series so let's see so for example if in this case in this case of mask your w and l varies so if your w and l varies your current your drain current varies your drain current varies your resistance varies your propagation delay varies okay moving further if your oxide capacitance varies the drain current varies if the drain current varies the resistance varies if the resistance varies the propagation delay varies okay then finally if you have this drain current equation and put all of them over here you see that these two parameters which is the the oxide thickness the w and the l based on this your drain current value is gets defined so for a chain of inverter for and for a, this kind this kind of inverter if you see variations across this particular inverter across all the inverters there will be variations across all the inverters so as a result of that the drain current value will be different for each and every transistor which is present in this particular inverter chain so for example if 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 one particular transistor if let's say this series of transistor was designed to give a delay of 100 picoseconds so it may happen that you might not get 100 picoseconds for similar similar configuration of of this particular cmos inverter so this cmos inverter was also designed to have a delay of 100 picosecond but because of the variations between this transistor and this transistor because of the tox and wnl variation you see that the 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 inverter cell which is just nearby will sh not show exactly 100 picoseconds but it will show 101 picosecond the the inverter which is next to this one will show 102 picoseconds this one might show 101 picoseconds in that range so this so each and every transistor each and every inverter is different from its neighboring ones on the top of that this even this transistors or this inverter was also designed with the same specifications that was that was given for this one but due to the due to the variations on the chip you see that this uh, this particular inverter might give a delay of let's say 95 picoseconds because this uh, the, the the variations got involved because the, this inverters are very close to the to the, to other cells or other structures so the variations the, so the variations from the other structures got added up in this in while fabricating these transistors the variations over here got added up while fabricating these transistors so a transistor or a or a, in a cmos inverter which was which was designed to have a delay of 100 picoseconds is now showing a range of delays so what do we do is we club all of them we take a single line which is we take the x axis which is called the delay line and we plot a 100 picosecond line over here and over and, and on this particular axis we say it's a number of inverters on chip with 100 picosecond delay and we try to plot the number of inverters the amount of the number of inverters that is present on the chip with a delay of 100 picoseconds and if we try to plot that we will see that the maximum number of inverters on the chip they will be having a delay of 100 picoseconds second and 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 there are and there are inverters which will be showing a delay of 108 picosecond and 91 picoseconds on the chip the, the the quantity of those inverters will be less but they will be still be there and there are other inverters that will show a delay between 91 picoseconds and 100 picoseconds and 100 picoseconds and 108 picoseconds so this is how the distribution is so for example over here the number could be let's say thousand the number over here could be a lakh so it says that one lakh inverters shows a delay of 100 picosecond over here it says like 100 transistors or 100 inverters show a delay of 108 picosecond and let's say more again more again 100 inverters show a 
through a delay of 91 picoseconds so this is basically this, this is basically number of inverters on the chip and this is the variation that you see so so the this is what it was designed for but still you see a variation of 8% for uh, for one for one set of inverters you see a variation of maximum 9% for another set of inverters and this variation and when clubbed with the on chip so this is on chip this is variation and when you club all of them you get this you get the term OCV it's called on chip variation so and and that and the terms that are used to represent in this they are called as D rates so they are called as OCV D rates and in this case the D rates are plus 8% and negative 9% Okay, and these are the D rates is that that are being used for your STA your static timing analysis tool. How are they? How are they getting used? And how how are they actually being used in the timing reports? We'll be looking into that part in a separate section. But this is how the term on chip variation actually comes from. So let's try to let's try to stop for the on chip variation at this point, and let's and we'll be looking into the timing reports with the OCV with and without the OCV D rates in a separate section. So let's try to conclude on chip variation discussion over here. Thank you.